has trapped so many black families. Uh, this bureaucracy exists because they have to take care of these people. If these people become self-sufficient, the bureaucracy is unnecessary. And I think the bureaucracy knows that. So they have a self-interest in creating this permanent dependent class, which I think you talked about the, the bureaucracy. I think a lot of the rules and regulations and things like that that come about help ensure that. Uh, they're not providing opportunities. They're providing merely enough of an existence that some people are not motivated to do better. Uh, I remember uh, when I was in grad school working in a convenience store and on overnight shift and two young black women came in and they were from the apartment complex next door and one of them had obviously been fussing with her mother because her mother wouldn't give her the money for something and she said, well I'm going to show her, I'm going to have me a baby and get my own check. She thought all she had to do was have a baby and the state would give her her own check every month. And you know what? They will. One thing that has not come up and hasn't been mentioned is the gang problem. If their parents, their parent usually is, often happens, is working two jobs, they're never home, there's not supervision. What is the, the person gonna, what's the young person gonna do? I mean, and once they are initiated into the gang, part of the problem starts there. And then when they try to leave, that's another big problem. I would have to say uh, another piece of the puzzle is the popular culture that influences the young uh, black and white and Hispanic uh, children who are coming of age today. Uh, they are, they, many of their icons have, uh, and whether they're sports figures or musicians or actors that are very vocal politically and often, you know, without a clue, uh, they, ha they do impact the behavior and I do think they do a lot to further a sense of entitlement uh, among, you know, teenagers as they are becoming young adults and that is, that negatively impacts your um, ability to seize the opportunities to become self-reliant and um, a contributing member of society, if you expect things to be handed to you, or, or you feel that you've, you just you're should, entitled. you're just entitled, you know, that is a problem. Uh, my mother is also a school teacher, and I know we've often talked about this, and there have been many years when in her classroom she's had children, who, students who were being raised by grandparents because one, at least one of the parents was incarcerated and they were always, uh, it was always linked to some sort of drug or you know, other type of criminal activity that they got into through gangs or whatever that, that put them there. Do you see that as a bigger problem in the African-American community or as opposed to the white community? More the African-American community, yeah. yeah. The incarceration rate the incarceration is, is just higher. Yeah. And the economic, overall, and, the economic level is lower. And I think it's also a disintegration of the family, with, as Van mentioned. You know, you have a higher percentage of black families that, don't, that are single parent that don't have a father figure. And uh, over and over, you know, you see that those, the families that do have all the components of the regular nuclear family are, by and large, more successful. In some instances, uh, 
Uh, first of all, I think any child, if they're motivated, can, and, and they've got the mental ability, they can improve their life. That may be difficult, but I've known friends of mine that didn't have a dime to their name, worked and put themselves through college. A good friend of mine put himself through law school and become a very successful lawyer. And he paid for it all himself. He had no help from his family. Now, there's no reason a black child can't do the same thing if they're motivated and they've got the mental ability to do that. And in some instances, in today's environment, a black child even has a better advantage than a, than a white child. And as an example, my nephew is a very successful surgeon. He graduated from the University of Texas with honors, and he's a good kid, and he didn't get into med school the first time around. But he got passed over by several minorities that actually did not have the qualifications he had. So there's, you know, there's, there are opportunities for the kids to succeed if they're motivated and they've got the ability to do it. But I'm kind of going back to something that we talked about earlier in the discussion about how you would describe someone and whether you would choose race to be the first thing that you used to describe them. And I kind of do think that if someone is black and I'm white, I might choose to use that as the first thing I point out. Well, it was a black man. Because it's very obvious. It's, a, it's something that comes right to mind. So now looking at that black man that I'm describing, maybe I'm describing him once, but all his life, the first thing someone says about him is he's a black man. That can have absolutely no effect on his life, or it might have a dramatic effect on his life. It's an individual experience, and I think that the way things change is more like erosion than big sweeping changes. It, it whittles away over time the meaning of he's a black man and how that affects him and whether that makes him feel good, bad, or indifferent at being described that way. But I don't think it's avoidable that that person lives their life knowing that the first thing that someone thinks of or uses to describe them is their race. Okay, you didn't answer my next question. It's like you guys have read my notes. <laughs> <laughs> what is your view on affirmative action? Is it still necessary? Do you still need it? Is it giving a leg up? Is it giving an added advantage? What thoughts on affirmative action? Like most, most government programs, affirmative action is clumsy, arbitrary, and rarely completely fair. Uh, but I think it is probably still necessary. Does everyone agree with that? I do. Yeah. I mean, we, we still have problems, and we haven't solved them. And so what, you, what do you do? Do you try to keep solving them? I, I just can't give up on them. I'm not going to give up. Uh, and we have to keep working at it. It's still, I mean, we have all kinds of ceilings that we put on in situations. And we just have to be aware of that, and we have to keep working at it. I mean, I'm, younger, I'm old enough that all of this stuff that everybody's that, that's younger that are talking about it's, it's like van and i we grew up in that and we saw it happen it's not going to change overnight it's not going to change overnight it was ingrained into us it's ingrained into the culture and it's going to take effort and it, the bureaucratic messes that we get into they're just part of the the part of the issue and they're and they can be part of the solution if we go back to what we were talking about entitlement if you feel you should just because I think that's a bad thing um, I think that giving students in school in high school you cannot give them at least the last time I was in the classroom you could not give them a grade lower than 50 no matter what they did because they might not be able to pass. To give them half, just give it to them when the student over here 
has a few more uh, points, if you want to call it that, because he's worked for them. I, I think that's entitlement too. And I think that affirmative action is in a form of entitlement, but I think it needs to uh, be made broader. I don't think it should just be for certain ethnic groups, for certain people, for blacks or for this or for that. I think it needs to be broadened. But if it's for everyone, then it doesn't advantage anyone. I think that it needs to be broadened in that it should be more than just, it should be, it needs to have a broader base to be able to be applied. Um, just like the 50, you give them 50 points and that goes for all the kids. Uh, not just black or white or whatever. Yeah, or right, but I think it takes away in some part that last bit of incentive that people need to make it over the top, to know that they were given something that everybody else had to earn. Yeah, does it? You does weren't good make, enough to earn it. So right, does it make it you, you feel like, you know, that you, you didn't earn it on your own? If you knew that you were hired for a job or that you were on the rolls of a university that you wouldn't have been if your skin color were different, how does that make you feel? I don't know that that's a very affirmative feeling. I think it devalues whatever the ultimate goal is, and whether it's, you know, getting into medical school and my own sister couldn't get the same thing UT couldn't get into the law school even though she was more qualified than some of the minorities but she wasn't able to get into that one because she was a white girl so what well, was disappointing you know and you know, I, I agree angry. I think you angry you have to and you know we wrote the congressman and everything, but you, you have to, you know, I feel those things uh, you should earn and it shouldn't just be given out just here. But it, I think it makes it ultimately whatever the goal is, whether it was, you know, a place in medical school or law school or, you know, getting, passing the class, you know, it's, you're not entitled to that. You know, you should work for it no matter what color you are. To earn that it has value then I think it can also give people an excuse I, I I have no doubt of the stories that were told about people who couldn't get in and someone of a minority status was let in um, but if you are denied then it gives you that kind of scapegoat well I was white and obviously they let some black kid in instead of me because they had to have the numbers or the quota and maybe that's not true at all maybe you just really weren't that good but now you've got it as an excuse. I see that often. It, you know, people uh, come up with it. That's a good excuse. If, if, if you didn't get into this school, you can get into another one. There are just too many schools out there that if you didn't qualify for one, you could get into the other. And it, 